Hey everybody and welcome back to the Hive Mind StarCraft 2 tournament. My name is Evolution Gaming's Woodhouse. And I am here bringing you the final match of week number two in the winner's bracket, mind you. There's still a loser's bracket. They're still playing down there. But this is the final match between Headshot and Liberator. And if you haven't gone and watched games one and two, I would highly suggest doing so. They are very, very awesome. I enjoyed them a lot. First game was played on Belshire Beach. Second game was played on the Shattered Temple. And like I said, go check those out. Go do it. If you haven't and you're watching this right now, turn, turn this off and go watch it. So without any further ado, let's actually take you right ahead into game number three. So we have spawning up here in the, I guess it'd be the top left side of MLG's Metalopolis, we have our yellow Protoss player who's looking to put this series away two to one after losing game number two. We have our Protoss player, Liberator. Down here, his opponent spawning as the purple Terran pieces, taking game number two after losing game number one pretty, pretty smashingly. We have Headshot. Again, this is the MLG version of this map, so we do see the supply depots down here, and we do see that it is only a close spawn by air. <coughs> I explained in the last game what that would look like on Shattered Temple. Well, this is what it looks like normally. As Liberator spawning up here in what would be the 9 o'clock, and Headshot spawning down here in the 6. Now, notice that these are close by air, not by ground. Close by ground would be up here. But we do see Liberator just going to go ahead and continue to produce the probes like a good guy, except for right there, he kind of miscued a little bit, but that's fine. Cutting the probe to get down his first gateway, and we see that probe continuing to do so. Headshot continuing just to produce SCVs at this point. If we look at the production tab, yeah, everything is about standard. We do see Headshot deciding to go for the gas before refinery. This can lead into some interesting play later on, such as uh, Marauder expands... Reaper expands, different things like that, different gas heavy builds depending upon what the player has in mind. Headshot now in the past has been known for his drop play. He is very, very good at it and likes to make it as painful as for his opponent as humanly possible. We do see the first gateway for Liberator going to go ahead and come down now. The first assimilator also finishing up for him as well. The refinery for Headshot is done. Does only have one guy mining on that though at this point. Do see the barracks just about done as well. I actually do not know. Did Liberator get? Yes, he did. He got denied. No, he did not. He actually did peek in here and at least see where his opponent was. Doesn't look like he got a good read on what the gas was doing though, so he probably won't be expecting any sort of shenanigans, tomfoolery, what have you. We'll have to see as the game goes on, though, how he decides he's going to deal with that. At this point, literally both players looking like they are content just to go ahead and continue to macro up like good little guys. We do see three SCVs finally put onto the refinery of Headshot. Second gateway now coming out for Liberator as well. Supply right now is actually dead even, and the overall cap advantage goes into the favor of Liberator as well, throwing down his third gateway. Colonel boosting the warp gate out. We do see that is about 45 seconds done. Headshot going to go ahead and tack down a second barracks here. That barracks is actually almost done. I'm a little late catching that. I'm sorry. I do see the second refinery going down as well. So apparently he has something specific in mind, whether that be for very, very early medevacs or what have you. We do see the tech reactor going down. Or the tech lab, wow. Looking like he's going to go ahead and just produce some marauders out of that once that finishes. He does have more marines working their way out of the unreactored barracks. Continuing to produce SCVs, though, that is good. He is only down to one SCV on that refinery, though. It is kind of looking like Liberator is going to go for some three-gate pressure here. He has yet to take the second geyser, and that second geyser for Protoss is kind of an indicator of what you decide to do, depending upon how early or late you actually end up taking it. And at this point, like I said, he still has yet to take it. Do see two pylons going down as if he wasn't, if, as if he was supply blocked. Two more going down. He's just getting ready for the mass warp in action. We do see a factory also going down now 
forehead shot as well as stim coming out and he does have one marauder out on the field right now that stalker is going to be very very unhappy should he be on the receiving end of a concussive shell which at this point is still unupgraded looking back up here we do see the warp gates now done for liberator he did warp in a round of stalkers down here I like this pylon placement a lot. He could have maybe hidden it a little more and stuck it down here so that he had all of this to warp in on and just defile the Meg statue. <coughs> Another warp in of Stalkers coming up. This is actually going to be kind of tricky. Attacking up a choke point against a Terran is kind of scary. And we do see it, the push coming in, deciding to target that down instead. Oh, this is not good at all. Losing one Stalker. Actually losing a couple in that engagement. He is down to five. I believe he had seven at one point. Warping in another one to replace it. As we do see now, he is not. He has put a second assimilator down, but is not mining out of it. You can see up here by his gas income that he is limited, and that's what I was a little bit worried about to begin with. Right now, supply is actually dead even. That's SCV going to go ahead. Oh, and he does not have high ground vision. He needs an observer of some sort or those zealots to go up there. Oh, but instead leading with the stalkers that's not a good move at all going to drop one down to 44 HP Now mind you these units can shoot down but these units of Liberator cannot shoot back up because of the changes of sight Things like that they cannot shoot back up. We do see another warp in coming in for Liberator I would like to see him expand behind this. He has his army out here, you know, basically pressuring Liberator or headshot and by virtue of his army being there, he can actually go ahead and expand behind this. At one point he had the money and it looks like he's going to continue to have around the right amount of money to do so. His economy is still flourishing. He is continuing just to produce probes, getting the mass queuing action on there. Deciding correctly this time to go ahead and it looks like lead with the zealots, which like I said before is a good idea. So that they can soak up that damage so that the heavy hitting stalkers can go ahead and do what they need to do. And we do see now, just as I had suspected, yep. That is a lot of Marauders, though, to be attacking into. Especially with medevac support here, that is very, very dangerous, and rightfully Liberator does back off. We look at the supply now, 51 to 49 at this point. It's actually really close, but Liberator still has not expanded. Like I said, he had the money to at one point, tacking on one more gateway, and actually this is about the extent of what he can produce off of if this is one base, but it does look like he is going to go ahead and throw down a robotics facility anyway. That is going to severely hurt his economy in the long run. As I've said before, and I will say it again, three buildings, maybe four is the max you can support off of one base. As you can tell with a four gate, and we do see the attack coming back in up here. One tank is out, going ahead to kill the neutral supply depot. As I've said before, the three gates, maybe four, or three gates in a robo, is really all you can support. We do see the attack coming up. He wants to pick that off, but I don't think he's ever going to get it. We do see the siege tank sieging up now to provide some cover for that ramp. So yeah, like I said, I would like to see an expand here. I would also like to see Headshot expand. He has a metric ton of money. And it does look like he is throwing a command center down. He could also stand to throw down. Okay, he is throwing down two more barracks. I could actually use more. 16,000 minerals in the bank is a heck of a lot to have just kind of sitting around. I'd like to see him throw down some more barracks. But we'll have to see if he has something very, very specific in mind for this. No upgrades on the way for either player at this point. We do see Combat Shield just about... Well, it just started. Never mind. The Observer for Liberator is coming out now. That will give it, give him high ground vision onto this little deck here so that he can actually shoot up with this force down on the bottom. thing I worry about, though, and you can start to see it down here when we look at Headshot's mineral line, is he does need to go somewhere with this. He needs to expand down his ramp. He needs to do something. He has enough cover here to drive this force out. It's just a matter of pushing down the ramp and then literally just tacking down unit producing structures of some sort. What? What? Where's... Headshot, you... Headshot, did you scout? Headshot did not scout. Oh my god. He's going to be in for a very, very rough surprise here. And kids, this is why... The first lesson of StarCraft II is to scout, scout, and scout again. We do see Headshot going to go ahead and try to expand to his opponent's main. The natural four Liberator is down right now as well. Liberator is supply blocked though. And yes, Headshot in for a very, very nasty surprise. 
finding out that the base that he thought was going to be his natural is actually occupied by his opponent. He kind of shit the bed on that move just a little bit, I think. Um, you know, we've seen Headshot go ahead and try and do this, and oh no, the command center's burning. That's going to be a huge investment if it goes down. He needs to get that across here to his base to get it repaired. But oh no, Headshot, that's no! Headshot, that's 400 minerals plus the 200 in SCVs. Headshot. Oh no, this could be disaster. Oh, and he does get it there in time. We were about to see a 500 mineral kill by these stalkers of Liberator. But like I said, Headshot kind of kind of wetting himself there when he did see the main of his opponent who is not using Chrono Boost at all. We did, he did see the main of his opponent where he was looking to expand instead of his natural... And again, he is also not dropping the mules. He could have a lot more economy, but yeah. He does scan down here to see that there are units that he can come down and kill. And he does rightfully decide to do so. Oh, but he needs to protect those medevacs. Those medevacs are huge. And one goes down. Is two, Are they going to get two? He needs to get a better concave. The concave at this point going to Liberator. As we can see, the units just getting slowly picked off. And there we go. He finally did move everything down and is going to win this battle pretty easily. Moving down. Now the question is, is he going to take his natural? That's become like the million dollar question. Is Will the players take their natural? It's not just him. We've seen some hidden expos that have gone pretty well. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, definitely go look back at games from week one. There were a couple of proxies that were... Mm, Maybe a little bit less than questionable. Oh, and we do see that one stalker probably going to get... Oh, and ooh, he took a siege blast right to the face. And I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Headshot wants this expansion, even if he has to take it from his opponent. You see the nice stalker lineup by Liberator. Going to go ahead and pick off those medevacs as they come in. Ooh. Yep, okay. He does get the drop off in time. Gonna go ahead. That is a big drop for not that many stalkers back. The immortal just hanging out out here. Ooh, and that is not good for Liberator at all. Headshot just continuing to pound away at his opponent. Again, we do not see this expansion command center moving anywhere at all. Taking out the cyber core, that means no more stalkers. That means only zealots at this point for Liberator. Liberator supply dropping like a lead balloon. Warping in a round of zealots, but that's not going to do much good. Oh, and two out of the four gateways get unpowered. <coughs> Pulling the probes to try and deal with this. And... It was less than super effective. Taking out gateways now, Headshot is just continuing to clean up what he wants to be his expansion. But if he wants that to be his expansion, he's got to fight for it, and he is doing exactly that. Taking out the robotics facility now, continuing to just wail away. This Nexus is just about next. We do see the probe train from Liberator coming to expand to not the ideal location for an expansion, but he'll take it because it's kind of hidden. We'll, we'll, we'll accept that. We do see Headshot going to go ahead and just continue to clean up the main base of his opponent. 25 food to 84 at this point. Liberator completely abandoning his post down here in his natural. Going for the hidden third base. Which I guess would be like expanding to his new main. I don't know how you want to put that, but it's going to be an interesting battle from here on out. We do see the forces of Headshot continuing, like I said, just to clean up the buildings of his opponent. And at this point, I, you know, to be honest, I don't think there's a whole lot Liberator can do at this point. He has abandoned one post. He is dropping down a bunch of gateways and whatnot. I'm still waiting to see this expansion move headshot, and I am... Oh, there we go. Is he gonna... Is he gonna... Where? Headshot. Head, headshot, you... Headshot... Head, headshot, buddy. You, I don't, I don't know what to quite make of this. Like I said, we've seen a lot of proxying of bases and hiding, quote unquote, of bases. But this is actually a first where I actually do see a player that 
on more than one occasion has kind of refused his own natural. We'll have to see how this plays out through the rest of the game. But at times, we do see that hidden expansions do work. Just ask Liberator. And I'm sorry guys, I am, I'm poking a little bit of fun here, but this game is actually kind of wild at the moment. It's got my blood pumping quite a bit, actually. I do. I want to see who wins this. We do see the uh, replacement cybernetics core coming down now for Liberator as well. Over here in his... We're going to call it his refugee main. Over here on the top right-hand side. So now the players, instead of spawning cross-position to begin with, now they are cross-position from where they were. And Headshot does scan the expansion. Sending the SCV train down here to heal the planetary fortress. Looking back up here at Liberator. Continuing just to do the warp in action so that he does have units when that attack does come. He is at 38 supply of 42. His opponent headshot is at 124 of 126. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you see a couple more, or a gateway and a Twilight Council going down now? I don't know how effective the Twilight Council is going to be with no gas geysers. Although he is sitting on a metric ton of gas income from his main that was demolished. And at this point, it looks like Headshot is just kind of content to chill out here and wait for things to happen. Planetary is done at his natural... And he is deciding to lift back just in case. Putting together another Doom Drop. Headshot is getting ready to deliver the final blow to his opponent, Liberator. We do see Liberator still has not taken either one of the Gas Geysers in this refugee main of his. See the Observer chilling out here to make sure that no expanding can happen at his natural. Nice saturation on the refugee main of Liberator at this point. And there he does go ahead and decide he's going to put the gas geysers down. That's a lot of zealots at this point. I don't know... Hmm. Headshot. Scanning again to make sure that the main is still there. This one probe out here for scouting, and there it is. There's the doom drop. Looking to clean up his opponent. We do see... Oh, is, is speed going to finish? Oh my god, is Speed going to finish? And it looks like he will, because... Headshot was content to pick off all those Zealots instead of go ahead and take out the one upgrading structure that Liberator had left. <laughs> so again, another probe pull. Another exodus from the second main of Liberator. Headshot going to go ahead and just literally clean up everything his opponent has left except for the one pylon down here that he used to warp in. The probes looking like they're going to go ahead and try and expand to the fourth of Headshot, or of Liberator. Oh, and the one hero stalker with no kills. Oh, poor stalker. At this point, Liberator lit literally is probably just kind of trying to stop the inevitable. We do see the army from Headshot Gonna go ahead and try and corner those against the planetary fortress that was built at his natural. And we do see some of those probes getting picked off. Liberator gonna go ahead and just kind of dance around here for a little bit. See the one gas guys are still up here for him as well and the hidden pylon. And now it looks like Headshot is just content to sit and heal up because the probes and the one zealot are going to just kite him all day. I can I can see this coming. We're playing Ring Around the Rosy, Pocket Full of Metalopolis. I don't quite know. That doesn't quite make sense, but stick with me. That the, the joke was still there. Okay, it may not have been comedic gold, but it was at least comedic bronze. So Liberator coming back up here to what was his refugee main. And I guess you would say, let's see, that's one, two, three, four. This would be his fifth. So I guess this would be the fifth for Liberator going down now. Right now, Liberator is sitting at 11 supply. It was 11 of 8 there momentarily, but if you noticed it just quick enough, it was 11 of 8. 
So there actually is no capability for Liberator to go ahead and make anything at this point. He needs to tack down a pylon, actually needs to tack down two pylons, to unsupply block himself from the perpetual supply block of Doom. Headshot just correctly making sure his opponent did not take this base. And scanning the fifth of Liberator to make sure that that's where the Nexus actually is. Going ahead and loading those units back up into it to run across here and take it out. And the cancel, and we see the mass exodus again to find the sixth base of Liberator. This has to be frustrating for Headshot. I, I You know, I have to give him credit for that. Uh, again, like the other two games, uh, there was a little bit of BM in this game that I... Uh, I Accidentally deleted the entire conversation as opposed to just the BM. So that's my fault. Oh no! Oh no! The sixth gets denied. Where is he going to try and take his seventh? He's down to ten supply now. And the Oh, he has to be careful here. This has to this has to get up. He has no more money. Even after the cancel on that Nexus, he will have no money on the Nexus. Ooh. That's sour. That is the sour boat life. For those units, he's going to just continue to play ring around the rosy, but it looks like they are going to get sandwiched in here by the remaining forces of Headshot. And at this point, actually, I don't know why Headshot just doesn't come back here and kill that Assimilator. That is literally the only unit left for Liberator. And I actually do expect to see a GG at any point. Now, this game... <laughs> This game actually has probably been a GG for about five minutes, but Liberator definitely giving us some comedic relief on his way out. And by out, I mean his trip down to the loser's bracket, in which he will play next week. I'm not sure who he will play, so definitely make sure that you keep in check to see who does what. And we do see, you know, for being revealed, that that is like the hero assimilator keeping this game going. We do see the units of Headshot going to go ahead and pull back to go kill it. Like I said, right after that, it becomes a matter of you just don't have any buildings. What? What is he? What? He has no money. He has knobs. I'm going to go ahead and just kill that assimilator, and that should be a GG inadvertently from Liberator. Like I said, Liberator, thank you for the, the comedic relief at the end of the game. It was a hard-fought series between these two players, though. I will have to give them that. So we congratulate Headshot on moving on to the next round of the Hivemind StarCraft II tournament. Again, my name is Evolution Gaming's Woodhouse. Be sure to check out the rest of these VODs as they come up and come ready on YouTube. And if you're having any questions about how things are being run, what's going on with the MSU Hivemind, go to Facebook.com. I know most people have it. And... Just search MSU Hivemind and see what happens. You'll find the magic that is the MSU Hivemind. So with that, guys, thank you for watching. I will see you next... Well, I'll actually see you in a 